And the chairperson of the African Union Commission is in Nairobi. Musa Faki Mahmat is set to meet with President Uhuru Kenyatta and various opposition leaders ahead of Kenya's elections next month. His visit highlights the AU's concern over tensions ahead of the polls. Mahmat has authorized the deployment of an AU election observation mission to the country. The vote is scheduled to take place on the 8th of August. Let's get you more now on the build-up to Kenya's elections next month. I'm joined live in studio by CGTN reporter Robert Nagila. Robert, the African Union is clearly concerned over the upcoming election. How worried should Kenyans be at this stage? Well, thank you, Panina. Um, they have a right to be very worried at this particular stage because we've seen some telltale signs uh, like we saw in the run-up to 2007, like we've seen in the run-up to 2013 as well. Um, up until last week, it all appeared to be okay. There was an uneasy calm between both political sides and their supporters. However, last week we then saw um, several incidences of heckling uh, during a presidential rally, during an opposition rally. Uh, this both at the adversaries' strongholds. Then we also saw incidents of uh, strong throwing. This has not been helped by the rhetoric coming from politicians where the National Cohesion Commission uh, is pointing a finger at, the Electoral Commission is also pointing a finger at, and the police are also pointing a finger at. So the Kenyans have a right to be very, very concerned. However, in this, at the same time, the police at this time appear more prepared than they were in previous elections. Mm, and we, of course, have heard from the police saying they have a huge number of police officers or security agencies, I should say, uh, that are going to be deployed all over the country. You're talking about telltale signs that point towards a possibility of violence. What are these warning signs? Well, first, um, what the security forces have done is they're dividing this into two particular categories. One is uh, election-related uh, violence. Uh, which comes from either campaigns or on that particular day. The other is through incidences such as banditary attacks and terror attacks as well. Now, with election violence, uh, they are very clear that a lot of it is being propagated by politicians who are, are inciting. And uh, when you look at um, the, the attacks uh, by Al-Shabaab and banditaries, you're looking at certain areas that have been declared hotspots uh, like Kipia, Samburu, near central Kenya, then along the coastal strip. Uh, Lamu, uh, Northern Kenya, Garissa as well. This is for fear of Al-Shabaab attacks. However, authorities uh, are saying that they have taken adequate measures to ensure that people will be able to cast their votes on that particular day. So that remains to be seen. However, there's a third one, which had not really, I mean, it had been there, but they had not really sat down and focused on it until now. And that is the issue of uh, uh, fake news on uh, uh, social media platforms uh, because some of them have led to incitement and led to violence. So this is something that they're looking at and we know that uh, a special unit has been set up to deal with this particular uh, the area because at the moment uh, the Kenyan election has just been plagued by a lot of fake news. So where this will lead and how it will influence the election itself remains to be seen. But to, to what extent really have the divisions that led to the violence in 2007 still at play 10 years down the line? Well, analysts say that, look, the two protagonists who went before the ICC, whose two communities, that was the Kikuyu and uh, the Kalenjin in Rift Valley, that were involved in a majority of the violence, uh, their leaders, Uhuru Kenyatta, the president, the deputy president, William Ruto, have not come together. So they say that that uh, lessens the violence. However, then you have opposition strongholds. And there's also uh, police are saying that, look, some clashes may occur where during the governor's race is not the presidential. With the presidential one, what they think is that, uh, as we've seen before, it will be peaceful throughout the voting process. Uh, the tension will begin to come after the first day as people are waiting for results, what's going on. And we've already had claims from the opposition, for example, saying that uh, there are plans to rig this election, which don't help the situation. They're telling their supporters, stay out. As soon as you voted, you stay outside the polling station until the, the results are out, which doesn't help the situation as well. So all these things together uh, basically is just uh, like waiting to light in March so that the fire can blow up. Mm. So we wait and see, but uh, we know that the authorities have trained for this. 
there's a multi-agency approach to this, including the military, the police, the general service unit, which is a specialized uh, paramilitary unit and other uh, units as well, all training together in case of this incidents. We know that there's additional equipment that has come into the country as well. So um, we just have to wait and see uh, what exactly happens. We may get some violence. We may get to a situation where nothing actually happens. That's the, uh, how the selections work. All right, Robert. Let's leave it there. Thank you for those insights. Thank you. Robert Nagula here in studio.